Good afternoon and welcome to Lunch with Lynn. Hopefully you have grabbed a snack and you're ready to go. I appreciate you being here. This is our faculty webinar series specifically for our faculty who teach our pre-built online courses and or uh, pre-built uh, land courses. Today's topic is personalizing your pre-built course. And while some of these topics, uh, some of these tips and recommendations will be helpful for anyone who teaches an online course or a course that uses an LMS, uh, like a web enhanced course, this topic is specifically helpful for those at our institution who are teaching our pre-built courses. So I want to start today by sharing uh, just some background information I'm go going to share about the community of inquiry, which is a theoretical framework, and these three domains of student engagement. When you think about uh, any course, really, there we have the student, and we have three types of engagement or three types of interaction that a student can experience. So the first one is student to student, and that's that peer interaction. We have student to content, which is the student um, either in pairs or in groups, but, but also interacting with content of some kind. And then we have the domain of student to teacher interaction or student to teacher engagement. And that's where you come in. And that's what we're going to focus on today. So to give a little bit of, of background, just a theoretical framework, I'm gonna give a real high level view of this particular framework. Um, it, was, it was first um, introduced by Garrison, Anderson, and Archer, and they found that the teacher plays a pretty critical role in the community of inquiry. Today we'll be talking about the community of inquiry in an online course and um, any course that really uses an LMS. So the community of framework or COI is a, it's, um, a theoretical framework for the optimal design of online learning environments to support critical thinking, critical inquiry, and discourse among students and teachers. So at our institution, the course and uh, content, the course navigation, the path through the learning has already been designed for you um, and provided for you and your students. But that's just one part of the online learning environment. You really do hold the keys to drive the creation of the other parts of the learning environment. When we build an online course, we work with a course writer who brings his or her uh, personal uh, and professional expertise and experience. Uh, and that's, that's really what we use to help build the course. Um, but when you teach it, you're adding another layer or another element of personalization to the course. Uh, you've been hired to, uh, because of your experience and because of your expertise and because of your views on the particular content. And we really want to help you and encourage you to put that touch on the course because it just adds another element of um, engagement for the student. So just very briefly, I'm gonna, um, kind of zoom in to each of these, but just to give you a high level overview of this community of inquiry, we have the teacher plays an important role when it comes to cognitive presence. So the teacher you serve in a cognitive presence manner. Um, you also have a teaching presence and there's also this affective presence. Um, so as these uh, elements or these types of presence exist in the course and as you play your role, these can overlap. So there may be times where you are engaging students cognitively, but you're also showing a caring manner toward them. And that's where that cognitive and affective presence will overlap. When all three overlap in the middle, that's really creating an engaging educational experience for the student. So when you play uh, a role in terms of your cognitive presence, this is where you are encouraging learners to construct and confirm meaning through reflection and discourse. So in an online course, this may be within discussion forums, within your grading, 
uh, within one-on-one -on -one meetings with them, within emails and announcements. So there are a lot of different ways uh, that you can engage with students cognitively and show you are there at cognitively present to encourage them in that um, journey through the content. The teaching presence is the design, facilitation, and direction of cognitive and social processes for the achievement of both personal and educational value. So basically that means you are establishing your teaching presence, you're creating a learning experience for students to progress through uh, the material, you're providing facilitation, support, and guidance. So where that cognitive presence was really focusing, focusing in on learning specific elements, uh, focusing in on specific assignments or specific action steps or specific outcomes, this teaching presence is really about guiding the students through the course materials, helping them see the learning path that we've created for them. You're reinforcing some general key concepts and you're fostering engagement. Then uh, one of my favorite domains is the affective domain. And this is where you show up as a caring faculty member. And our institution, that's a big part of what we do. Uh, we care for our students, we pray with our students, we ask our students how they're doing, we get to know them. Um, so this is really where you are encouraging learners to project themselves socially and emotionally as real people within the course and communication mediums. So we're not just a list of names in the course. We're not just a roster of students. These are real live, uh, you know, breathing and active people behind the screen. And you are one of those people too. And we wanna make sure that we are helping you uh, present that to your students. So you're really doing more than facilitating an online course. You're offering an educational experience. And that's really what I wanna make clear today is that although you've been hired to teach a course that is really uh, you know, locked and loaded, ready to go, uh, we want you to add your fingerprint to that course because you bring an element that no one else can bring. You are unique and we want to make sure that that uh, becomes part of the course. But how do we do this, right? And that's what we're here to talk about today. So the first thing is we want to see your face, your voice, your personality, your experience, and your expertise shared throughout the course. So you're unique and you can offer our students a unique learning experience. Lots of institutions have access to the same resources we have access to. They have the same textbook uh, options. They have the same uh, PowerPoints. They have, you know, the same types of assignments and uh, learning outcomes based on what the course is designed to do. But you are the unique part. You're the part that we can't duplicate anywhere else. And this is your invitation to start personalizing your online course instead of just seeing yourself as a hired facilitator. We want you to see yourself as an integral part of the learning community and the learning environment and this student learning experience. So you probably already do a lot of things that engage your learners, like maybe replying in discussions, offering personalized grading feedback and posting weekly announcements. But we invite you to personalize the course with your own personality, your own experience, your own expertise, your own face, your own voice. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So I'm going to give you uh, a real kind of a fast and furious uh, tips and recommendations for, for ways that you can be present with your students. And we're going, all of these that I give today offer um, opportunities for you to hit each of these domains of presence. So some will focus more on cognitive, some will focus more on teaching. Uh, some will focus more on affective, but together uh, doing all of these things helps you really fill that theoretical framework and hit all of those domains. So there are, like I said, you probably do some things in discussions and within your grading feedback to engage students. 
we're going to talk specifically today about what you can do in announcements. The announcements area is really your place where you can really add to the course, show your face, let your voice and your personality be seen. So the first tip I have for you today is a mini lecture video. And this is, it doesn't have to be long and it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just you uh, using Canvas Studio or recording on your phone and putting it into Canvas Studio. Uh, it's just really your opportunity to allow your students to see your face and hear your voice. They want to know that you are more than just a name on the other side, that you're, do, you're there to do more than just grade their work when they turn it in. So this is your opportunity to share your experience, your expertise, even your story. Share with students who you are. Maybe you show pictures of your dog or you have your dog, you know, you show your dog for a moment. Um, you know, you tell about your family, you tell about your work experience and what you've been doing in the field that make um, your story unique. Uh, you can even take time to talk about commonly asked questions. If you've taught a course, uh, particular content over a period of time, you know what the sticking points are for the students. Um, typically, you know what kinds of questions they're going to be asking uh, themselves that they might not ask you, um, you know, directly. And this is your chance to, to kind of answer some of those questions and take care of some of those FAQs. Um, it's also a great time to talk about tough concepts. So each of our courses probably has some concepts that are tougher than the others. Um, you know there might be a period in the course where students are going to kind of start to struggle. And this is really your opportunity to be proactive in offering them your voice and your expertise and your experience and helping um, illuminate uh, the concepts and give them real world examples so that they can start to make connections to their own life examples. The wrap up video and or the intro video. So this might be one in the same each uh, week at the end of the week, you might offer a wrap up um, what you could point out what you saw that students did well. Uh, you can uh, start to make a bridge between what students have been learning and doing and what is to come the next week. Uh, you might have a separate wrap-up video uh, and a separate intro video. But again, this is your face, your voice, um, your experience. You're giving helpful tips and encouragement. That can help with that affective domain of presence. You're offering reminders and recommendations and an overview of the tasks and what to expect. And that's really that teaching presence. You're helping them navigate through everything that they're going to be doing that week. And you offer your real world experiences and engage them cognitively. And that helps you hit that cognitive domain. And of course, you can always offer a prayer for your students. Um, that's uh, helpful in showing the affective domain that you care. Um, it helps you share your faith. Uh, and that's just a really great way to relate to your students and let them know that you care about them. Another um, option is to offer, I'm just calling them curated videos. So over the years, teaching content, teaching particular courses, you probably know of videos that might be helpful, supplemental to help uh, engage students with the content, engage them cognitively and help them understand uh, some of the tough concepts or even some of the foundational concepts that are involved within your content. Um, so you might find videos on YouTube or Vimeo and you can embed those right in the announcement. You don't even have to link out to them. You can actually place those right in your announcement. So when the student opens the announcement, they see the video, they can click play and it's all right there in that one area. This is your opportunity to bring in additional expert voices. So the course writer who helped us uh, develop the course, they've brought in their own voice. They've also brought in the voice, uh, the voices of experts. In your experience, uh, you may know of other experts or alternative perspectives that can help illuminate some of the concepts for students. 
This is a great opportunity to bring in some scenarios and cases and real world situations and examples and help students start to make connections to what they're seeing in their life around them at work and what they can expect to see within the field. And it can really help them better understand uh, the material. Another opportunity for offering students supplemental materials is through links. And you can add items within an announcement and link out to those items. So it might be articles, blogs, websites, anything you find that might be helpful in telling the story of the content and the course maybe from a different perspective or in a different voice so that uh, it might resonate with one student a little bit better than what was in the course. Now, a couple of things I'd like to say about this is that it's important to let students know that these are supplemental resources. So within our course, we have our need to know types of things, and we've built those into the course for you. But we all know that there are things within our courses and our content that would be nice to know or kind of that extra to know that kind of icing on the cake in terms of content and information. We want to let students know that while it's not required that they go out and read uh, the articles or the websites or the blogs that you've provided, it is helpful and it's supplemental to their learning. I also recommend, and this goes with anytime you embed a video or even uh, a video of yourself or a video that you've found out on Vimeo or YouTube is that you add some context to it in the announcement. So you have your video and then you might have an introduction, ask them to watch the video and then have something after. So you're kind of wrapping this uh, link, this video, this explanation that you've provided within uh, a framework of where does this fit? Uh, what does it relate specifically to? And that will help students kind of know where, where and why uh, you're adding this information. A real great way to engage with students uh, and get their attention is through pictures. So this might be uh, pictures related to your content. It could be just fun, motivational, inspiring pictures. It could be something to welcome them into the course or welcome them into the week. Uh, and you might have uh, real world images, you might have illustrations, uh, but really what you're doing is you're priming the learning. You're, you're priming that pump, you're activating students' schema or their mental models, and you're putting, uh, you're giving life to information that lives likely in text form in your course. So when you're looking through your course content, think about how, what pictures or how can I give life to this information so that students can see it within the context of the real world. Um, they have some sort of uh, you know, image in their mind as they're thinking about the content. So it can give information life, could show your personality. Maybe it's just, you know, this picture of you with the thumbs up or a picture you have found, uh, like the one I've presented in this slide. Um, it can give context uh, to what you are discussing or what you're getting into um, this, this week. So great places to find free, um, open source, royalty-free images are Pixabay, Pexels, Unsplash and Canva. So those are some really good sites for finding some photos that don't require citations. They're open source, meaning these artists have offered um, their material for free use. Infographics. So I'm a visual kind of gal. I like to see things in um, structures and I like to see things and how they relate to each other. Um, I, I'm a fan of color and images and those types of things. So one of the things you might think about adding uh, are infographics. And basically an infographic is a way for you to prime the learning, organize the content, um, help students start to make those uh, mental models of the week's content and how it all fits together. You might even have an infographic of the entire 
course and kind of how the, the various topics that are involved. And each week you present that infographic with the one section highlighted so students can kind of follow along visually where they are in the course. So it's basically just a visual representation. It could become a study tool. Uh, it's an opportunity for you to share your expertise. It's an opportunity to give context to, to the uh, material and how it all relates to each other. Um, and these, you may, you may be looking at these infographics and saying, Lynn, I, there's no way, that's so creative. I, there's no way I could create that. These are, are literally plug and play in Canva. So if you don't have a free account with Canva yet, I encourage you to get a free account. When you go to Canva, you just simply search for infographic templates and they give you hundreds of options. And then you just start these uh, that I included in this slide, I didn't do anything to them. It's simply a template. So I selected three templates that might give you examples of what infographics could look like. If I were to personalize these for my course, maybe my course is four strategies for effective communication. I can go in and just click on the text, change it, click in the box and change each of those four items that it's offering. I can even click the images and select different images, but the structure or the template stays just like it is. I can also drag things around and, and you know, make a lot of changes if I want, but I don't have to make many changes at all in order for it to be effective. So I encourage you to get a free account with Canva and check that out today. And uh, the final item I'd like to talk about today is face-to-face -face connections. Um, I do wanna start by saying, uh, we don't require our students to meet with us synchronously online. We never require that within our institution. In fact, that's one of the um, basic frameworks or um, concepts within our online learning. It can all be done asynchronously. But that doesn't mean you can't offer optional synchronous meetings. Uh, there may be times where you want to do that, uh, offer that with a particular student who might be struggling. Um, they might be struggling personally. They might be struggling with particular concepts. They might be struggling with a project that they're working on. Um, it's always a good idea to offer uh, a Zoom session, a one-on-one -on -one with, with you. They might not take you up on that, but at least they know that you care enough to offer that, and that does speak volumes. Um, we don't require you to have virtual office hours, but that doesn't mean you can't offer them. Maybe once a week, you say on Wednesdays from two to three, I'm sitting at my computer anyway, I'm available, here's my uh, virtual office link through Zoom. Just click the link and join me if you'd like, and that's your opportunity to sit and engage in discussions while you're waiting, perhaps to see if students might show up. Again, we, we don't make that mandatory, but it could be optional for you to offer. Um, virtual meet sessions, and this is basically where you offer your students an opportunity to come in with their peers, with you, and maybe you do some Q&A, you offer some encouragement and support, you recommend some helpful tips. Maybe they have a big project coming up week four. So in week three, you post an announcement and you say, hey, I, we have a big project coming up. I'm gonna offer this optional open Zoom room, Tuesday night at six, join me if you'd like. I'll be talking about your project that's coming up and how you might get started with that. Even if no one shows up, you can still present as though you have students in the room, record it, and then that's a nice video for uh, the following week when they start to work on their project. Uh, this is an opportunity to, for you to share your experience and your expertise, things that you've seen in the field, talk about course concepts related to what, um, how they look in real life and what happens uh, when those concepts are implemented. Um, and again, you can do this through Zoom, and we just ask that you would make it clearly stated that it's optional for your students. 
So that's what I have to share with you today. I've talked about the mini lecture, the wrap up video, intro videos, curated videos, links, pictures, infographics, virtual office hours, virtual meetings. So my question to you is, what will you start doing to personalize your pre-built course? You can use the chat to add any comments or questions. I have the chat pulled up, so I'll watch that. And while you put your comments and questions and maybe what you will do to start personalizing your course, I'd like to give a little plug for what we're doing next month in Lunch with Lynn. And that is a Canva spotlight. And we will focus specifically on studio. So this goes nicely with what we talked about today because I talked about videos and um, you know finding different things. So next month, I'm gonna show you how to use Studio to create your own videos, splice things together, pull things apart, edit, do whatever you need to do for your videos in order to embed them into your announcements. And um, if you have any questions at all, let me know. Uh, one of our participants says, infographics for sure, plus intro and wrap up videos, thank you. Uh, another says, create an intro video and check out Canva. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I sure hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or want any help or support with any of these things that I recommended today, just send me an email and I will be happy to uh, meet with you via Zoom, walk you through anything that you might need help with. And uh, God bless you and we'll see you next month.